So in this section, we're going to be looking at Napa and how to develop a SharePoint app with it. Uh, again, as you may have seen earlier in the course, uh, Napa is the newest technology that Microsoft's released about developing for SharePoint. It is working specifically with JavaScript and client-side uh, extensions for SharePoint. So it's going to be a little bit different than if you're used to working with some of the other options. Uh, we'll also cover uh, those uh, those other options as well, SharePoint Designer and, and Visual Studio. But Napa is kind of this new ground that's happened with uh, SharePoint 2013. So we'll kind of go the, into this a little bit in detail to uh, uh, help you understand and, and really work with the uh, with the new technology. So in this section, we're going to be looking at uh, why to use Napa, what you need to be looking at, what you need to be thinking about when you think Napa, and how that's going to come into play. We're going to look at uh, setting up the dev environment. Uh, because uh, Napa is a no install uh, dev environment, you may ask, why do we need to worry about that? Well, it's no install on your local machine. Uh, it, does, it means that you don't have to set up things like uh, SharePoint servers or the rest if, you, if you're not inclined to do that. What you do need to do is set up some pieces on a server somewhere, and normally that's in the Office 365 area, uh, to be able to uh, do your testing and to actually be able to run that code and give you the IntelliSense on the JavaScript and all of that. So we're going to go through that. And, and to be honest with you, this section of the, the this piece of the section is probably going to be the most complex uh, that we're going to go through. So it'll take a little bit of time. Then we're going to go through and help you design your first app. Take a look at the, at the things that you need to think about, the things that you need to do, the things that you need to put together to really make uh, Napa work for you, to actually create that client-side extension to SharePoint. And then build that app. Uh, how do you actually go through and put it together? How do you actually make that runnable code that you're going to be able to use in SharePoint to make put everything together to make it all work well? So. Uh, at the end of this, you should see all of this come together. This does not include deployment. That'll be in a uh, follow-on section. But we're going to go through and take a look at all the pieces that you'll need to really understand how to work with Napa. So the first question is, why use Napa? Napa is that piece that we've kind of, to be honest with you, been looking at for a long time with SharePoint. Uh, for a very long time, SharePoint's been focused on the server side, on what happens on the box itself and how things go. This has caused a number of problems. This has caused the problem with code extensions blocking the uh, IS threads and actually uh, taking up resources that make SharePoint potentially less stable than, than the product team may like. But it also means that you have to round trip everything. It means that things that happen uh, have to go back to the server and then back in. This is one of the big challenges that has happened with uh, SharePoint and uh, one of the challenges that, that has gotten SharePoint a bit of a reputation as being slow. Um, what Napa does is, is help you uh, move a lot of that functionality back out of the server side and on client side to be able to do a lot of the things that you've seen in previous versions of SharePoint with Ajax and with Silverlight and all the rest of that. Napa brings that forward into JavaScript and works with it in a more standards compliant manner. So when you're doing this, you're able to use your websites that are a lot more interactivity, uh, a lot more capability inside the browsers themselves. Uh, and this means, I say browsers, I mean, this is all the supported browsers. This is uh, Firefox and this is Safari and this is IE and all the rest of those. You can actually use this in a uh, much easier cross-platform way uh, to make your users a lot happier with your application. Napa requires no client-side install. All the development is done in the cloud or on the server. Napa is, you could say, eating its own dog food. It actually pushes down a lot of the functionality to the client. A lot of Napa is actually written in JavaScript. So you'll actually see like the IntelliSense and all the rest. You're not going to be round tripping around. When we go into the demo, you'll be able to understand exactly how it all fits into place. But just know that um, when we are working with the Visual Studio section uh, in this course, uh, you'll notice that there's a lot of setup. You need to actually set up a server environment that you can work with, and you need to install Visual Studio, and you need to make sure the tools are in there, and you need to make sure the updates are there, and you need to make sure your Active Directory is tied in, and all of those kind of things. With Napa, 
you just do some configuration. You don't have to do uh, a lot of installs and away you go. So it makes things both a lot easier for uh, the developer to build up their dev environment, but it also makes it a lot easier to maintain that dev environment and to make sure that uh, everything's up to date. Because if you've done things like work with uh, Hyper-V or VPC images and move them around, you know that things get stale very easily. It's very easy to get out of sync. It's uh, uh, actually a big maintenance task to keep everything going. Going. With Napa, it's all kind of managed on the server side, so uh, everybody gets access to the same thing and everything's always up to date. So things are a lot easier on that side on keeping everything in place with, uh, with using Napa for a dev environment. And then uh, the thing to note is that Napa is most focused on Office 365 based SharePoint environments. So that doesn't mean you can't use what you develop in Napa on your on-site SharePoint 2013 environments, but just know that you do have a, a, a tight connection in with Office 365 and the Office development portal. So uh, even if you're doing things on premises, know that you do need to kind of reach out of your organization a little bit to use Napa and do some connections in there. I'll actually uh, walk you through some of the different ways that you get onto the portal and how you actually put all of that together. And then, as, as I kind of mentioned, it's all for client side, but that means that Napa really doesn't work uh, for creating those server-side events, those workflows, all those things that, to be honest with you, the traditional SharePoint extensions. This is something that allows you to do what you used to have to do with uh, web part work, uh, adding your, your JavaScript or whatever you're doing inside the web part and then kind of delivering that way or shifting things around uh, uh, or, or putting your Silverlight controls in there. Uh, Napa handles all of that and makes it a lot easier and a lot, uh, lot quicker to work with. So uh, know that it's not a uh, Swiss Army knife. It doesn't do everything, uh, but it does do some of the most important things that you're looking at, which is that client focused functionality that those pieces that used to be web parts, it used to be all of those kind of things to go together. So having said that, let's take a look at the dev environment itself. Uh, you do want to make sure that you've got a Napa compatible Office 365 account. Um, if you have a MSDN account, uh, that comes with a Office 365 account for you, uh, for the dev. So you can actually go in there and put that in place. If you have a, uh, a what is a E1 or E3 uh, license for Office 365, uh, you're compatible with Napa. So you've got that capability in there as well. And if you don't know what an E1 or E3 is, um, I will say check with your licensing specialist or with your whoever runs your uh, software licensing because things get a little subtle in there and some of these terms are actually kind of Microsoft guys will tell you it pretty quickly and then finding out the details if you're not in the sales pipeline can be a little bit interesting uh, but just know that it's there uh, if you have a uh, if you're an independent developer or somebody who kind of uh, works on your own if you've got an Office 365 standard or an Office 365 Pro, some of the things that you can buy like in Best Buy or Fry's or some of the electronic stores, note that uh, these generally are not Napa compatible. And as a matter of fact, if you have one of those, it becomes a challenge to use your MSDN uh, benefits for working with that. So if you've got that already on your account, you may need to set up a separate account uh, for your MSDN uh, work. Uh, to be able to drop in, to be able to use that account, and to be able to work with the uh, with the Napa tools. So a uh, little bit of detail there, but something that I have found people get a little confused about. So just be aware of what level of Office 365 accounts you've got. Uh, note that you can always go to the uh, uh, dev.office.com portal and sign up for a 30-day free trial just to see what's going on and what's happening before you do any of the, uh, the licensing issues. So uh, pretty easy to get access to. Uh, again, right here, register for the account on dev.office.com. 30-day free trial if you've got that. Uh, if you don't have anything else, if you've got a uh, compatible Office 365 account, it'll roll right into the account, and that account lets you put that into place. You'll need to create a SharePoint site. When you set up that dev.office.com, it'll show you how to uh, set up the account. If you're doing a trial, you'll be on the on Microsoft domain. If you've got your, your own uh, SharePoint area, you'll have the portal there. We'll look at some of that again when we go through the demo and you can see what's going on. But you need to create that site in there and turn on the developer feature. The developer feature is, is actually activated when you create that site by choosing the correct template. Uh, 
Um, again, in the demo, we'll go through that whole step of going in, creating your site, making sure it's on the correct template, then installing the, the Napa Dev Tools and seeing how it all works through the, the, the tool set there. And then you actually add the developer app itself. Uh, this goes in, this lets you have all the different capabilities. This lets you uh, have the basically the editing environment, uh, whereas the template itself has all of the plumbing behind the scenes to put it into place. So you can see uh, putting together the, the dev environment isn't that complex. The worst part is uh, really kind of walking through the steps and making sure that you've got the licensing and tools all set up correctly. You'll see right here, uh, this is the uh, Napa Office 365 Development Tools uh, page that you'll see. You can see that you what you go to the uh, uh, to the development site. It says what kind of app do you want to build. We're looking at SharePoint, but but this is going to be fairly common um, if you're working with other types of office development as well. That's one thing that's really nice about Napa is everything's kind of being grouped together, and you can take a lot of these skills you're using with SharePoint and do things like you can see here uh, task panes for Office. They're actually uh, go in to do add-ons for various pieces of Word, add-ons for Outlook or, or Exchange. So. One of the nice things about Napa is you're no longer choosing between uh, working with SharePoint on the server side or Office on the client side or Exchange or all of the rest of these. You're actually getting a more consistent level on the tool sets uh, to be able to do what you're looking to do. Go in and you choose that. Here's the uh, page that you can see. Napa is delivered as an app just like any other app in SharePoint. So it pops up, it's on the on the uh, SharePoint store. You can choose it. You can see it's even got ratings in there. You go, go in there and add it in. You can see here that uh, when you add it in, you can choose to add it for yourself or add it to all of your developers in your organization if you're actually grouping together and using your uh, SharePoint development environment for multiple users. It can go in and you can just pre-configure it for everyone there. And then uh, here you can actually see going in and seeing the the Napa uh, environment. You actually added the app for the organization and everything's in place. Once it's in place, you can see your site contents there. You've got your dev tools. You've got your, uh, and, and you can see here just in the screenshot, and again, we'll go in more in depth when we go into the, uh, uh, into the demo. But you can see we've got the development tools that have just been added. But the template itself also has things such as the app packages that you've got deployed. The apps in testing, uh, how you're doing those feeds, what's going on with how, how things move around. So you can actually have even uh, the wonderful thing about using uh, SharePoint as a tool to help do the SharePoint development of being able to go through and do workflows on pieces, to be able to do approval plans, testing, status, tasks, all of those kind of things come into play now with Napa and you can come in and make it all happen. So that's kind of the story of putting it together and getting the dev tools in place. Now let's talk about designing your very first app that you want to put together. Napa apps are written in JavaScript and run in the client browser. Um, said that a couple of times but you do need to remember that it is a very different way of looking at how to do SharePoint development uh, than you probably have done before um, that means that whatever happens is happening client side and you do need to think about the round trip you're going to be your app is going to be very responsive for users but you're also going to have to worry about the round trip up to the server and back for any data. So you need to be thinking about caching. You're gonna be thinking about uh, working with your data sets locally. You'll be thinking about paging. All of these things that you did think a little bit about with SharePoint on the server side because you uh, there had the round trip to the database and back and you're working with your camel and all your different access models there. But with this, you're looking at more of a delay coming from the, the client to the server and back again. So uh, as you're designing it, you want to do as much caching as possible. Also remember that because you're actually working with that uh, in the browser, you're working with the SharePoint client object model. Uh, if you're only used to working with SharePoint in the server side, you're used to having the option of having the, uh, the server object model, which gives you access to a lot of things. Uh, the client mo object model is a lot more limited, so you'll need to be aware of that. You'll need to be actually going through pretty much the web interfaces. Uh, if you're used to working with the REST interfaces and the SOAP interfaces and all of those, that's pretty much what you're going to be doing with the object model. Uh, the object model makes it a lot easier to work with. It makes that makes it nice to be able to pull in data sets and to be able to work with pieces there. But it is 
uh, a lot less data than you'd be getting on the server side. On the flip side, though, uh, you're going to be having to do a lot less of the do I touch this or am I going to throw an exception if I access this object than you would on the server side. Things are a lot more filtered for you. Things are a lot more managed for you. There's some pluses and minuses with that, but know that you are working with that uh, client object model. So knowing that, let's look at your building your uh, first app. App should be based around JavaScript functionality. I keep doing the JavaScript, JavaScript, but this is something that traditionally SharePoint designers in the web browser have been working with Ajax, have been working with a lot of different tool sets that are not uh, really modern JavaScript uh, tool sets. With uh, Napa, you're going to be working with JavaScript. If you want to put in Node.js uh, to be able to work with some of it, go for it. If you want to do some, uh, if, if you want to modify and, and maybe utilize some uh, various different templates that you're doing in JavaScript, go for it. But know that you're working around that JavaScript functionality and not really around the traditional SharePoint object model. You're going to be given some capabilities to go in there and, and work with that SharePoint data, but know that it's a quite different environment than you used to with the traditional SharePoint model. So keep that in mind as you're going through. The app will be run in the browser environment. You will not have access to a lot of the things you're used to in the server side. Any calls you make will be a lot slower. So know that you do need to do caching. You need to do prefetch. You need to gather more data than you think you need. Uh, the flip side of that is since you're running in the browser environment, you're generally actually going to have more resources than you would in a traditional uh, Ajax model or, or actually running on the server. This is because uh, the SharePoint servers are very tightly managed the resources, uh, how much memory you get, how much CPU time you get, all of those kind of things are very tightly monitored on the SharePoint server. On the client side, you've got uh, basically the resources that the browser has. So if you want to pull down and, and work with, uh, if you want to stream maybe uh, half a meg of data uh, that you want to cache, or maybe you want to stream down instead of a half a meg, you want to do 20 meg. All that matters is how quickly you can get it down. Can you stream it and work with it as it's arriving on the client side? All of those kind of things. Uh, you've got plenty of memory. You've got plenty of disk cache. You've got all of those kind of things that can really make uh, a difference in, in your app being very responsive and very open for what the user wishes to do. Napa provides IntelliSense for JavaScript in the development environment. This is something that if you're used to being a C-sharp developer, a VB.NET developer in Visual Studio, um, I, I absolutely love my IntelliSense. Uh, I am a little bit lost without it sometimes because then I have to remember all of the uh, all the different methods or have to go back and take a look at it. Well, now you've got it in JavaScript as well. Uh, you, you've kind of had it on some of the different templates with Visual Studio, but this allows that IntelliSense without having to install all of Visual Studio. You drop it in, you start typing away, you get those objects, and you start pulling it back in. Very, very useful, especially for a dynamic language like JavaScript. Uh, it can help you figure out what's going on, what's happening in the model, how you're actually going to bring in all this information, and how it all comes together. So uh, look at that and know that you're going to be a lot easier in, in building that environment. It's going to be something that it's going to be able to tell you pretty much right off the bat if you're going to run into problems or what you're having there. And then remember to test against the supported browser versions. Uh, the JavaScript stuff is very cross-browser. Uh, the libraries that SharePoint gives you to work against this object model work against many browsers, but know that new builds happen all the time. Uh, nothing is uh, so much in flux as how the browsers are moving forward, especially as HTML pieces of the standard keep getting added and evolved and, and updated uh, as those standards themselves uh, get closer and closer to a final spec and the specs work together. Know that you need to keep an eye on that. Uh, and, you know, once we get to, to the official HTML5, then we'll be moving on to something else. So just be aware that even though that it is helping you out with those cross-browser, do go back and test and make sure it's uh, functioning correctly because you don't uh, have that that single uh, server on the back end that's doing all the processing. You're actually putting pushing the processing into a number of different runtime environments. You need to make sure it's all in, in good shape. So that's the environment itself. Now we'll, we'll go into the demo and walk through what it takes to actually make a app with Napa.